Hey guys, Marissa at KitchenTableStamper.com. Today I've got a cute little triangle, tri-fold, fun fold card for you. This was the fold that we did in last week's um, Coffee and a Mystery card. And I happened to be stamping along with you guys so that I could show you some of the intricacies in the fold. I didn't expect to finish a card, but did and think it turned out really cute. So I wanted to walk you through a clean video on this particular design. So let me start here with our cardstock for the mechanism. I've got um, pretty peacock cardstock here and I have two pieces that are four and a quarter by 10 and three eighths. Now let's score these guys up. I like to use both my Simply Score tool and my paper trimmer for this particular fold. I find that it keeps those diagonals from getting confusing. So I'm gonna grab my Simply Score tool and put in the 10 and 3 eighths inch side. We're gonna score at five and a half, then flip it 180 degrees is really important and make a mark at four and a quarter, okay? That's all you're doing is making a little mark. If you wanna use a pencil, you can use a pencil. We're gonna score again, five and a half, rotate 180 degrees and make a little mark at four and a quarter. Now we're gonna take the Simply Scored out of here and we're gonna do the second stage of scoring with our paper trimmer. I've got my cutting blade and it's parked all the way down at the bottom here. You don't want to mix up your cutting and scoring. So make sure you got your scoring blade ready at the top. You're going to open up your paper trimmer and what you want to do here is take the four and a quarter mark that you made on the Simply Score and the opposite corner and you want to put them on the cutting track of your paper trimmer. Using the scoring blade you're going to score from the corner to the mark. So you're going to have a diagonal line like such. Set that one aside. Now we'll repeat. Find that little mark that you made and then you want to line that up on the cutting track. Line up the opposite corner and when you've got them both in line on the track, score from the point to the mark. Now what you have are two card stocks that look like this. You've got your five and a half inch score, your four and a quarter inch mark, and to the opposite corner. Good, now let's work these with a bone folder. Going to fold the five and a half, and then we're gonna fold the diagonal. And here you wanna kind of budge up the sides, you've got a nice straight line, and then work that crease with your bone folder. Same thing with this guy. Really square everything up here while you've got the opportunity, while things are still kind of soft. Now, what you're looking for here is for your two pieces to fit together, but you don't want this one to have the point off to the right. So if you do, like I do, then you folded it inside out. So all you have to do is swing that around and reverse your folds on both pieces. Reverse your folds. So we've just reversed our folds. Now look at this. When we slide these guys together, We've got this corner in our left hand. That's really important. All right, so now that we've got our corner, our upward flap, corner in the left hand, we can go ahead and adhere these two together. What you'll do is add adhesive. I like a nice strong one here. You can use your tear and tape if you prefer dry, but I love the multi-purpose liquid glue. You're gonna adhere the back of this panel, or the back of this half of your card to the inside, to the front of this card. So you're gonna take this loose end here and bring it right up 
to the score line. And then before you burnish down, just check and make sure everything's squared up from the back side, and then burnish that down. So now you've done the mechanism of the card. So again, the left hand has this loose corner. Left is up, right is down, and it'll make this kind of fun rotating mechanism. Pretty cool, huh? All right, now mine is just a little bit short of coming together. So if you find that you've got a little bit of a gap, what you can do is pull up from the bottom and just work this crease just a little bit tighter. And then you can pull down from the top and work your crease a little bit tighter. It's, um, it is a slightly adjustable at this point. And see, so I'm just pulling up and working that crease a little bit tighter. And I'll do the same thing. Pull up from this side. Really square these guys up before you do any decorating. This is where you can really square this up using your bone folder. All right, I'm very happy with that. So now what we're gonna do next is address our designer series paper. So my designer series paper has a definite directional pattern. I don't want my little banners going um, vertically. I want them going horizontally. So you wanna keep that in mind. This is a four by four piece of Dino Roar Designer Series paper. Uh, this is on sale right now. It's on the retirement list. It's while supplies last for $6.90. Love this paper. Pick some up if you don't have it. So we've got our directional paper the way we want it. It's oriented right for us. You're gonna cut from the upper right corner to the bottom left corner. Just pop it in on your paper trimmer, corner to corner. Park that scoring blade and cut. Now you've got the proper pieces for your card the way it opens. So let's bring that back in here so I can show you. So we cut it from the upper right to the lower left. We can go ahead and adhere those to our card. I'm gonna use my multi-purpose liquid glue again and just get those glued down. You've made a four and a quarter square with these two triangles. So the four and a half inch or the four inch designer series paper will fit nested right in there. You want a small border on the top and left and on the bottom and right. All the way up against the diagonal fold though. All right. Now it's time for a little stamping. I'm going to bring in some Whisper White cardstock here, Stamp and Pierce Matte, and the retiring lovely lipstick Stampin' Pad. If you don't have your 2018-2020 in colors, now's the time to get them. Um, so far, as of this morning, but it changes and it changes quickly, all of the in color products, 2018-2020 in color products, uh, except for the Pineapple Punch Grow Grain Ribbon are still available. But they do sell out quickly and they tend to um, go very fast. So if you want these in color products, pick them up. I love the Lovely Lipstick. I think Lovely Lipstick and Blueberry Bushel are my favorite. Blueberry Bushel I'm really gonna miss because it's going to leave a, a gap in our color palette. I'm stamping my pterodactyls twice. Now the pterodactyls are from Dino Days, which coordinates with our Dino Roar Designer Series paper. And we're also going to, well, we've got our Stampin' Pierce mat. Let's grab Pretty Peacock. This is, this is an in color, not retiring this year, but it goes awesome with lovely lipstick. We're gonna use the Thanks for Being a Friendosaurus greeting here on the little circle that we've cut out. Now this is the largest stitched shapes circle. And we're going to, so it's this guy right here, about two and seven eighths inches cut from the stitched shapes. We're also going to stamp the inside of our card. I've got another stitched 
die cut here. This is a stitched rectangles. And this one I think is the B size. Yeah, not the biggest, but the next biggest. So four and three quarters by three and three eighths. And cut that one ahead out of Whisper White cardstock. We're gonna use our pretty peacock. And I've got this little your roar sum greeting. And I'm gonna stamp that right in the bottom corner. That's for our inside panel. All right, I think we've done all of our stamping, so let's take away the Stampin' Pierce mat and ink pads. If you haven't picked yourself up a Stampin' Pierce mat, add that on your next order, that's retiring. I just looked at the list, I don't remember seeing it there. Things move quickly though. Let's do a little bit of adhesive. I like to put the little parts together before I lose anything. I'm going to adhere my largest stitched circle to the largest scallop circle from the layering circles dies. Cut that 3 and 1 16th inch scallop from Lovely Lipstick cardstock. Now let's go ahead and layer these two up. And then your roar sum. Now here's the fun part. Your card starts out portrait but when you open it, it ends up landscape. So let's glue your roar sum to the inside of our card, but we've got to go landscape on the inside and portrait on the outside. I've cut some more lovely lipstick elements ahead of time. I've got some little hearts here. These little dudes are from the Oh, look, there's one inside the card. I'm looking for a little bit bigger one, too. <laughs> Let me find all of them and show you. All right, so these are from the Be Mine Stitch dies. And I cut a bunch of little lovely lipstick hearts using this die that's like um, a little connected spray of hearts. But I also cut one of these little primitive heart shapes. So that's all out of lovely lipstick and I did that ahead of time. We're going to use some of these little hearts to decorate the inside. I think I'm going to use this little tiniest one and just pop a little lovely lipstick heart underneath my greeting. Put a multi-purpose liquid glue. Just glue that right in there. There's our inside. I'm going to put everything aside for just a minute. We're going to die cut our little pterodactyls my big shot my pterodactyls it's gonna take two passes through the machine my pterodactyl stamp from dino days coordinates with the dino dies and we're gonna cut that little dude right out line it up so you don't see any white around the edges I like to tack it down run it through we're gonna cut out two little guys here And there are our pterodactyls. Let's get rid of the big shot here for a minute and bring our card in. You can see tiny little detail, but really important. I've got a black Stampin' Right marker and I am going to make the little eyeball black. Hey, <laughs> so cute. You've seen my little lovely lipstick heart. I've got another strip of the Dino Days Designer Series paper here, or Dino Roar Designer Series paper. I'm gonna go ahead and dovetail the ends of that. I'm gonna use my Taylor Tag Punch. This little piece is one by four, and we're just gonna take the very end off of that, making a little dovetail, both sides. I've done the die cutting on our next piece. I've got an old olive, and this is from the Stitched Nested Labels dies. It's the second largest, two and three eighths by four and three eighths. Already cut. And we're going to layer up everybody on top of this label. So the first thing I'm going to do is curl the ends of my paper just a little bit, and I'm going to adhere that with some multi-purpose liquid glue right across the center of my label. Now I'm going to adhere my thanks for being a friend of Soros sentiment with some Stampin' Dimensionals. 
I'm going to add my Stampin' Dimensionals onto the label since the scallop circle is wider than the label. That way we know we don't have any adhesive hanging over the edges. You want to center that right to left and make sure your greeting doesn't go up or downhill. Then I've got linen thread. I'm going to wrap this whole thing several times with linen thread, leaving enough tail off the edge here about five inches so that I can tie a bow. What do we have here? Three times, wrap it around. Now I'm going to tie a knot first, a little square knot over under, over under. So we can really secure the linen thread. Now we're going to cut that away from the spool. I've got my little heart here and a 1 8 inch circle punch. We're going to turn this little heart into a little dangly charm by punching a hole. And we'll bring one of the ends through the hole and tie a bow. Isn't that a cute little detail? Finesse. Trim the tails. Now let's get our card base in here. Very important. We're going to lay this out, but we need to make sure that our adhesive is only on this triangle flap. So we're going to pull that guy down. We don't want to glue our card closed. I'm going to add dimensionals right to the designer series paper. Now I know that my card will not get glued closed, so I can bring this tab back up, center my label right to left, top to bottom, and adhere right to those dimensionals. Now we have a card that opens because the dimensionals are in the right place. Last step, let's put our little pterodactyls on. When you put your pterodactyls on, you want to watch the tips of their wings. You don't want them to extend past the tip of the label. That way, you know that this card will fit in a standard envelope. Got a couple of little dimensionals, one on each wing. Now let's get these little pterodactyls. So don't cover the sentiment, and don't let their wings extend past the tip of the label. When you got that placement, burnish down, and there's your triangle trifold Dino Days card. All right, be sure to grab the Dino Roar Designer Series paper before it's gone. You can still get the Dino Days stamp set with the Dino dies and save 10% when you bundle the products together. If you've got any questions about the retirement list, about the triangle trifold, if there's anything I can do to help you stay crafty, email marissa at kitchentablestamper.com and the shop Stampin' Up 24-7, you can buzz over to marissaalvarez.stampinup.net. Thanks for watching.